So, here's this morning's newsflash. One of the realities of life is that most of us will grow old. Age and death are not synonyms. Death comes to everyone, but age is a gift. And sooner or later, we arrive at the point where we begin to imagine whomever we are, that we ourselves are in the final stages of our lives. And we begin to ask ourselves quietly, seriously, what kind of person we want to be then so that we can begin to be that person right now. But if we learn anything at all as time goes by and the changing seasons become fewer and fewer, it is that there are some things in life which having happened cannot be undone, cannot be fixed. It's then more than possible that we will go to our graves with a good number of personal concerns, of life agendas left unresolved. Some of the family fractures will not yet have healed. Some of the words spoken in heat and in haste will not have been redeemed. Some of the old relationships and friendships, lost or broken, will not have been renewed. Some of the dreams will never be realized. So, has life been wasted? Has it all been for nothing? Many of the things for which we still feel responsible, even feel guilty about, we couldn't do anything to undo now, even if we wish we could. We can't put back together, for instance, a failed marriage. We can't cancel the years of neglect a lifetime of indifference, a history of disregard for the people who had a right to expect our concern. There is nothing we can do now about a lifetime of lack of contact with our children, maybe, or the tension we felt with our mother, maybe, or the distance we felt from our father, perhaps, or the jealousies and the outbursts and the petty irritations that marked years long past and call up still all our own defenses. That time, those situations are simply gone. They're out of our hands. They're beyond our control. Inside, though, the scars still smart. We have been hurt. We have done the hurting. We made the mistakes. We created the mess that came out of them. And there is not now and never was, as far as we can see, any way to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So, now what? If we cannot deal directly with all the unfinished struggles of our lives, how can we possibly face the end of life with any kind of serenity? The fact is that the unrest that accumulates over the years is the very grace reserved for the last years, the pinnacle of life. Only now, only then, can the consciousness of these wrongs really make a difference in us? Only now can this pain be made productive. Why? Because now we must deal with it all ourselves. There's no one here to forgive us anymore. There's no one to tell us we were right. No one to surrender to our insistence. No one left for us to refuse to consort with. Instead, they're all there, all alive yet, but within us. 
Now we must go down into the deepest part of ourselves and come to peace. Not with our old antagonists, but more importantly than that, with ourselves. With the conscience we have been refusing to reconcile with for years. This is the period of life when we must begin to look inside our own hearts and souls rather than outside ourselves for the answers to our problems, for the fixing of the problems. This is the time for facing ourselves, for bringing ourselves into the light. Can we come eye to eye with our own souls and admit who we are? If we have been selfish, can we bring ourselves now to the daily discipline of caring for others? If we have been dishonest about ourselves, can we take care now to tell the real truth about ourselves? If we have been Godless, are we able to trust now that the creator of life must therefore also be the home of our souls? And can we bow before the life that has claim on our own? Can we begin to see ourselves as only part of the universe, just a fragment of it, not its center? Can we give ourselves to accepting the heat and the rain the pain and the limitations, the inconveniences and discomforts of life without setting out to passively punish the rest of the human race for the daily exigencies that come with being human. Can we smile now at what we have not smiled at for years? Can we give ourselves away to those who need us now? Can we speak our truth without needing to be right? Can we accept the vagaries of life now without needing the entire rest of the world to swaddle us beyond any human justification for expecting it? Can we talk to people decently and allow them to talk to us? And yet, as difficult as all those moments may be for us physically, emotionally, it's also true that as the physical dimensions of life diminish, the spiritual dimension commonly increases. It is a special period of life, maybe the most special of them all. Indeed, life is not about age. It's not about the number of years we manage to eke out of it. It is about aging well. It's about living into the gifts offered in every stage of life. But perhaps the most important dimension of aging well is that we realize that there is a purpose to aging. There is a reason for old age, whatever our state of life, whatever our social resources. The gift of years comes to many more then realize that these later years are gift, not burden. Not everyone who lives them either understands them or welcomes them. But our task is to realize that, in fact, the end time of life is one of its best, certainly one of its most important. This time, the end time, is the time for melting into God for putting down the ragged remnants of the past, for learning to live in the present and to find it enough, for learning to live with life as it is and find it enough, for learning to accept ourselves and all we have learned as a result of it and finding it enough. The words that come now will be the honest ones, the hopeful ones the culmination of all the learning of all the other years. Then, 
the veil between us and eternity will begin to tear. And we will begin the slow walk through it. Finally, finally ready and open now to being thrown upon the heart of God. Thank you.